So then this morning at 5 a.m., there was a, a video that went up. CNN did a town hall last night, so they posted their thing on YouTube from uh, from the town hall. The Democrat Where, side in Vegas? Wherever it was. No, a town hall in... in uh, where Trump is, is with Trump. Oh, okay. And so then he softened his stance <clears throat> a little bit, and the Pope also, uh, his people softened their stance, saying that he, the, really the reporter kind of set him up on the deal, and uh, didn't really explain what the second other side of the story was and the and the disaster it's on the southern border and such. And so they both kind of walked it back a, a step or a step or two. But he did say that he, anyone that would support building that wall would be was not was not a Christian. It's like, you know, man, I right. don't care if you're the Pope or not. You can't see into somebody's heart, so you right, know, you can't be. But isn't Vatican City surrounded by a wall? That's what Trump said. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what he said. And, and Trump also <laughs> said, he said, hey, if if ISIS ever attacked the Vatican, which would be their ultimate goal, mm -hmm. they would the Pope would have wished I was there. Their ultimate yeah. prize. Yeah. Their yeah. ultimate prize. Right. right. So they say that they would have wished that he was president yeah. as opposed to somebody right. else. somebody else. Brooke Nelson and Kara Elstead with Allstate Insurance in the studio. Where are you guys uh, located? Where are you off us from? We're actually right off the corner of France and 494 in Bloomington there. France and 494. Yep. Now explain this one to me. Two young ladies like yourself, what on earth made you want to get into <laughs> It's an exciting insurance industry. Uh, it is an exciting industry. <laughs> you know, you help people whenever they're at their worst times. It's pretty beneficial, actually. Really? It's rewarding. Yeah. It yeah rewarding. It's not too bad. That's a good thing. What's about Allstate? What's about Allstate? I mean, why Allstate? Why not? Why Allstate versus anyone per, per, else? whoever else you could have gone with? Well, Allstate really, we have locations all over, and you deal with specific agents rather than calling an 800 number. I think a lot of people have had to deal with that. You'd rather just talk to one person at the same time, or in our office, you get there are four people. Guaranteed you're going to talk to one of the four of us, and we all work very closely together, so pretty much anything that happens, we all know about. And I think that's one of the big benefits of working with Allstate is that it's very personable. We care about our clients. We know our clients. We need to talk to them on an extremely regular basis. So totally different. So the technology that we have right now, and there's a lot of consumer websites out there, and the way we communicate with our buyers, part of my process now is in talking with buyers is how do you want me to communicate with you, right? Mm -hmm. Before it was real easy. Call you at work, call you at home, right. you know, all that stuff. But now it's emailing, texting, people are communicating with me via Facebook or other social medias, mm -hmm. sharing properties with me that way. It's a lot to manage and keep track of. So this next generation, boy, it's gonna be uh, definitely interesting. Our technology in the real estate community will be different as well. Mm -hmm. You know, when they're ready to make their buying decisions mm -hmm. 10 years from now, or less in some cases for the older iGen, uh, we'll be in a, we'll be in a different well, what 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 for sure. What it amounts to too, what you're saying is exactly right. We have clients right now that, well, I've had clients this year that the only way they would communicate is through Facebook. Through Facebook. Through Facebook. That's it. Not we, even just regular email. You can email him all day long, and he's not going to answer. You can text him; he's not going to answer. If you if you uh, 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 direct message him through Facebook, he'll answer within thirty seconds. Hmm. I mean, that's just the way he communicated. Right. Right. So when we when as agents when we're when we're working with you know hundreds of people a year, and they all have different ways that they want to stay in touch with you and be informed, you know somehow we need that tool. Mm -hmm. to bring all of that together. Um, well, what's the explanation with the Fed raising their rate and, you know, the the interest mm -hmm. rate's not following? I maintain that's a political move. It was, I don't know if it's political as much as um, we, we visit about that. And, and uh, it was set up so that in the event that our economy would start to go negative, as the world economy is, that the Fed would have something in their toolbox to have. Mm -hmm. So they almost had to go up so that in so the event they can go down. So they can go down. Now, yeah, I just have it here, right? Uh, Ms. Yellen prepared remarks said that that rates would rise gradually in 2016, but market volatility would affect pace. Financial conditions in the U.S. have become less supportive of growth. However, the committee expects continued strength in the labor market and inflation to rise. That was her, that was her, you know, summary of her statement, or actually her statement um, in front of Congress this last week. So they're saying, hey, we still think we're going to rise a little bit on, on the uh, Fed funds rate. 
Um, but we're going to watch market volatility. And there's been so much volatility oh. that, you know, they anticipated already that by the end of the first quarter, they'd have another, um, they'd go, they went up, that they'd have another one by Q, mm -hmm. by the end of Q1, and uh, that they'd have four additional ones throughout the year. So, you know, I think what it, what this has all done is kept everybody at bay. Mm -hmm.